you guys to send in any questions and we're gonna answer some chit chat and I hope you enjoy. Before we get started, I do just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support lately. If the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three video a week just isn't cutting it and, and you want more of me in your life, you want more ASMR, then please check out my Patreon. I link it in the description box of every video and I upload every week over there as well. So without further ado, let's let's get into it. I'm just gonna sit back. We have a lot of questions. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and we'll go from there. Okay, Mad Atya asked, what are your top three book tropes? Um, okay, I'm gonna do romance book tropes, um, just because that's mostly what I read. Uh, so, I would say reverse grumpy sunshine, Ooh, forced proximity, I need my characters to be together and be spending time together, and slow burn, slow burn. Reverse Grumpy Sunshine, Force Proximity, Slow Burn, give me it, give me the Rex in the comments, give me the Rex. Uh, my, I mean, you didn't ask, but my least favorite book trope in romance is Insta Lust, Insta Love. What's the fucking point? Like, literally, what's the point? I need them to be just, like, pining after each other, like, brushing fucking fingers and ankles, like, in the hallway for, like, at least 250 pages. Like, I can't. I can't. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Soph asked, do you have any advice for turning 18, or what would you tell 18-year-old you if you could now that you're 24? I think this is such a good question because it's funny. I really think back to, like, 18-year-old me, and it really is like that Taylor Swift lyric. How can a person know everything at 18 but nothing at 22? And, like, that shit is so true. I feel like when I was 18, I had just graduated high school, and I was working full-time. I was about to move away for college, and I just felt like I got my shit figured out, you know? Like, I was in, me and Josh were still together, but we were about to have a breakup, and I was about to move away from home. Like, I, I just think I wasn't, I wasn't emotionally ready for all the changes that were coming up as I was 19, 20, 21, especially, like, COVID. <laughs> Oh God, like I guess 18 year old me, I just really thought that I, I'm like, okay, I'm an adult now. I got this shit. Let's go. And what I would say now that I'm like 24, I'd be like, you have no idea what's coming. Stop stressing about stupid shit because what's really important is spending time with people that you love. When I was 18, I was just trying to like get my money get my degree, like, I was so focused on moving into the next phase of my life, into becoming an adult, that I really didn't get to, like, enjoy the end of my childhood, and I didn't get to, like, savor, like, I, I, you don't realize how many things are your last as you transition from children and teen to being an adult, so, so yeah, I would tell 18-year-old me, slow down. I know it might feel like you need to just have everything figured out, and you might think you have everything figured out, but you have no idea where life's about to take you. You are so young, and just enjoy the ride and save money. That's probably the one thing I would, um, like, go back and change the most, is I wish I would have saved more money in the early years, like when I, you know, didn't have as many bills and whatever, but yeah, I don't know. Sorry if that's not really helpful for you specifically, but that is what I would tell 18-year-old me. What is your favorite sunscreen? I love the Glossier sunscreen. Oh, I need a drink. My throat is so dry. Mm. 
registration was free in the United States and I could just like slowly take like a few classes. I, I swear I would collect, um, I would collect degrees like Pokemon, honestly. The thing that keeps me from going back and getting my master's or getting any other degree is one, the cost. I, I'm not interested in paying for it, especially because I don't need it. You know, it's not like I would get a raise if I got a new degree, right, doing YouTube. Uh, so I don't want to pay for it. So if it's free, yes. And then two, the way you go without having free schooling is to get scholarships, which is fine. That is how I got my bachelor's degree debt free. I uh, was really, really diligent in high school and I got a bunch of scholarships. But at least for the scholarships that I had, you had to be taking at least 15 credit hours of classes. You had to be at least full time. And there's no way that I'm ready to go back to full time being a student. I don't know if I would ever want to be a full time student again. But if I could just slowly take classes, yes. But in the meantime, I've just thought maybe in like 20, 30 years, you know, down the line. But yeah, I would love, I would love to go back to school if it was a little bit more. I could do it more with my schedule, I guess. Okay. Christine reads, asked, what are your favorite drinks, alcohol, or non? I just want to know what's in your cups at the start of the videos. That's a good question. Um, this, I currently am drinking a Dr. Pepper. I know some people, like, don't put anything but water in these. I'll put water, I'll put soda, I'll put juice. I don't, I don't care. I wash it in between, you know, uses, but... I've Dr. Pepper in that today, but usually it's like sparkling water. I love sparkling water. Trader Joe's has this like mandarin, um, mandarin orange. Maybe it's like clementine or grapefruit. I don't know. Man, it's the mandarin orange sparkling water. It's so good. So it's either that, Dr. Pepper, Coke, or uh, coconut Red Bull. Those are like my top four drinks. I don't really drink a lot of alcohol. If I do drink alcohol, it's like white wine, rosé, champagne. I just like sparkling, sweet, fruity wines. I don't, I don't really like red wine that much. Um, but my favorite cocktail is a mojito. I love mojitos and margaritas are great too, but I don't drink that often. I want to do another drunk ASMR though, and I think I'll just get wine drunk with you guys and we could do ASMR, so if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. Oh, Sam Sawyer asked, which of your favorite books would you like to see turned into a movie or a show? Okay, I, I know exactly which one. It is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. It's this book about this magical orphanage where children with magical powers go, but like in this world, magic is kind of like shunned and looked down upon. But it's about this social worker, Linus, who goes to the um, orphanage to, like, make sure the kids are okay. And, you know, it goes from there. But I just think it would be, like, in my dream, they would make it an animated, like, Pixar movie. I even, I think I put that in my Goodreads review. I was like, this movie needs to be animated by, like, Pixar or Disney. Like, or this book needs to be into an animated movie. So that's, that's what I would pick. I think it would be iconic. Nicole Nemo asked, would you ever move to another state? Yes. And honestly, with how uh, housing prices are looking in Utah, I might end up like having to move if I want to buy a house. That uh, isn't absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like, it sucks because most of my life growing up, as like a teenager, I was like, I want to move the fuck out of Utah. Give me the fuck out of Utah. I want to move somewhere else. Um, and then when I moved away for college, I was still in Utah, but I was like on the complete other end of Utah, right? I was far away from my friends, my family. And after college ended, I just wanted to come back. So we moved back and I was like, I don't know if I actually want to leave. Like, Maybe I do just want to be by my family and stay close. All of my family lives in Utah, is from Utah. And, you know, when you have that your whole life growing up and then you are alone, it's like kind of a culture. 
culture shock, you know? So after I graduated college, I was like, I don't know, maybe I do want to stay in Utah for a bit. But now that I'm like seriously wanting to buy a house in the next, you know, five, whatever years, Utah's not looking like it's going to be a, a great uh, place to do that. So yes, I would move to another state. I likely will end up doing that. But my biggest drawback is just I am really close with my family and I, I would miss them. So I need to convince them to move with me. But so far, I don't know if any of them would.
Josh Trish podcast. I've been watching like a lot of YouTube podcasts while I like work or do chores. It's great. But yeah, I love Steph Bohr, Brittany Broski, Tana Mojo, Brooke Schofield. Um, I've been recently watching a lot of Channel 5 with Andrew. I think it's his name. He's like a journalist and he makes really, really, really good like docu-style videos. I also love Patrick Cece's like pop culture documentaries. I watch a lot of those as well. So those are like kind of all over the place, but those are some of my favorite creators. Oh, I love Sarah Caroli for like book videos as well. Um, okay. Books, do you ever get tired of making ASMR or watching it? No, genuinely no. Like the only thing I get tired of is my neighbor is like filming ASMR is hard because I live in like a noisy apartment complex in a city, so, but if I had like a soundproof basement where I could just record all day, like, I would, and I love it. I love doing it ever since upping my upload schedule to three times a week. I was a little bit nervous at first, but honestly, I love it, and technically I upload every day, Monday through Friday. Monday, I upload ASMR. Tuesday, I upload on the Patreon or channel members, so ASMR. Wednesday's ASMR, Thursday I try to upload on my vlog channel, and Friday ASMR, so five videos a week. But I love it, like I, no, I never get tired of doing ASMR. Um, sometimes I'm not like in the mood to film maybe, or I don't want to edit like some days just because I'm like tired, but as for the actual job, no, I love it. I would happily whisper to you guys forever if you'd let me. Um, rank Cowboy Carter says, Marvel. okay, there's no way I can, like, rank the full track list because it's so long and I still need to, like, digest, but I can give you my favorite songs right now. Tyrant with Dolly Parton, are you fucking kidding me? Yaya is iconic. Spaghetti, I love when Beyonce raps, so love spaghetti. And uh, Most Wanted with Miley are my my favorites, I would say, but there's so many good ones. God, so many good ones. <laughs> Chloe asked, do you garden every day or every so often? Um, as of, I would say, like, six months ago, I'm an everyday gardener, at least once a day, probably. I mean, I'll, I like to take a tolerance break, you know, once a month. I'll take like a weekend or a few days and take a break, but no, I, I garden every day. It really helps with my anxiety, so, and it's nice because, like, I work from home. I, I do a creative job. I get to just make fun videos all day, so it's not like it hinders my work, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, whereas, like, if I worked, like, when I used to work at a restaurant when I was in, in high school, like, there's no way I could be gardening every day and doing that. So it really just depends. I'm not advocating for everyday gardening, but I, I do it every day. Fleur said, when are you going to come visit me? Um, when I get rich and I can buy a ticket, I will be on your doorstep the next day. The next day. Baby girl. Same with Evie. Evie said, come to the UK. Right there with you. I want to book a trip so bad. Ooh, this is a good question. Beck asked, favorite childhood home cooked meal? Um, ooh, my mom makes this chicken curry that's really, really good and nostalgic. It was just like a pampered chef recipe. <laughs> It's like an MLM. If you don't know, my mom, when I was growing up, she was in so many MLMs. And at the time, I didn't know. I was like in elementary school, but I'm just like, my mom loves essential oils. But Pampered Chef was probably the coolest MLM that she was in because they would make all these cool recipes and have like food parties. Um, but there was this chicken curry recipe that is so good that I love. Um, and my dad makes really, really soup that I think about all the time. My grandma, her homemade cinnamon rolls are my kryptonite. She also makes like a bomb meatloaf. <sighs> There's so many, but our go-to, like my go-to childhood comfort food is spaghetti and like white people. 
shell ground turkey or ground beef those were like the most common meals we had were spaghetti and tacos and it's so funny because like growing up I would always be like god we eat this all the fucking time like you know when I when I am on my own I can finally like branch out at whatever you know and I find myself constantly making spaghetti and tacos like you think you're gonna switch it up and then Like, it wasn't like we were eating anything crazy. Uh, the palate wasn't very broad, but my parents did a great job at exposing me to a lot of foods. I've never been picky. I will try anything once. I've had, like, escargot. I've had alligator. I love sushi, like, raw fish. Um, but my comfort foods are, like, very basic. Kathy asked, tell us more about your cats since when? at them. How old are they? So, I have two cats. If you are new, I would love to tell you about my cats. I have two cats. First is Sylvester. He turns six on May 25th. So, he is my Gemini baby. He's my firstborn. And I adopted him in 2018. It was like right after I had moved out for college. And I was lonely. My boyfriend was like working we'd go to school during the day and then he worked nights and so I would just be home alone like all night and I would just be like lonely so we adopted him from the shelter and he's the sweetest um yeah he's the best and then our second cat is sushi and he is four he just turned four this March so we adopted him in 2020 and um it's funny because they're both boys and they're both tuxedo cats, so I feel like a lot of people assume that they are blood brothers, that they're from the same litter, but it was like completely accidental, so we adopted Sylvester, that was the name that the shelter gave him, we just adopted him from like the local animal shelter in my college town, and then Sushi, it was like COVID, like Sushi was a COVID baby, so we adopted him when he was like six or eight weeks, he was very, very young, very small, but it was like the lockdowns were just starting in Utah, and I was like, I want to get another cat, I've been thinking about getting another cat, and now I'm going to be home, like, all the time for the foreseeable future, let's adopt another cat, but none of the shelters nearby were, like, doing adoptions because of COVID, so, um, I found, like, the, the person that Sushi, like, lived with, their cat, I guess, like, out and getting pregnant and so she had posted on like craigslist basically being like we have kittens uh twenty dollars if you don't come pick them up like we're just gonna take them to the shelter um and so i messaged like a bunch of people with similar postings that were getting rid of kittens on like craigslist and uh she responded to me and said i have one kitten left it's a girl and sent me a photo and i'll even insert the photo um and it was a little tuxedo cat and it looked just like sylvester as a baby you know and so that's i showed it to josh and josh was like oh my god it's a sign we have to go because we were a little bit nervous about like driving um and doing it like with covid but we wore a mask and it was like a four hour drive to the city that they were at so it was like a road trip but it worked out we went picked up sushi and he just slept on my chest like the whole drive home but yeah, so that's how we ended up with them. And then it was probably like a month after we had him when he was a little bit bigger. We took him back into the vet for like a checkup. And the vet was like, he is a boy. He is a boy. We thought he was a girl. Um, and so that's how we ended up with two boy tuxedo cats. Like it was completely kind of random, but it was funny. And then the way that we chose Sushi's name, because when we picked him up, they hadn't named him. I was like, did you name her? And they said no. So we were like, okay, I guess we have to name him. So we came up with three different names, Sushi, Peanut, and something else. And we wrote them on little pieces of paper. And we put like cat treats on each one. And we let Sylvester pick. And so the first one that he went and he ate the treat was the paper that said Sushi. So like the fact that they both have S names, the fact that they're both tuxedo cats, the fact they're both boys, like it just really felt like divine destiny, but anyway, <laughs> that's me rambling on about my cats. They are the loves of my life. Sushi, I call him Buki. 
that's like the nickname and then Sylvester's big nickname is Chicky or Chicken so we have Chicky and Bookie are there they're, you know how like cats have their like you know government names Sylvester and Sushi but we never call them that we call them Chicky and Bookie uh, but they're they're the loves of my life I love them so much and Bookie is like my soul cat like I've never connected with a cat the way that I've connected with with him I think sounds a little off in, in his little noggin because he's just so different I've had cats growing up I, I love cats they're my favorite animal um but Bookie is just funny like Sylvester is definitely Josh's soul cat like he is attached to Josh by the he like is obsessed obsessed he never leaves Josh alone so it's kind of cute because obviously I kind of felt like a third wheel but Sushi is my bestie so I call him my bestie for the resty anyway that's we need to shut up like I'm just going on and on about my cats those are my cats friend zone have you ever thought asked have you ever thought about quitting YouTube no nor I think like the, the platform will like blow up or get deleted before I quit honestly unless you guys like hate me and you know don't want to watch me anymore then maybe you could like bully me offline maybe favorite book in the throne of glass series asks Julie great question Empire of Storms Empire of Storms and I'm like 60% of the way through Kingdom of Ash and as of right now I think it's still gonna be Empire of Storms I love Empire of Storms what are your favorite types of videos to film um I love rambles like anytime when I can just sit in front of the mic and chat I love filming all videos I just think they're fun I love shopping you guys like seeing what I buy it works out um and then on my patreon I do so many high ASMR lit ASMR whatever you want to call it those videos are obviously very fun to film because you know but okay I think that is all the questions that I'm gonna have time to answer for today thank you so much for hanging out with me i hope you enjoyed this little casual chit chat 